morning. And welcome to our special Coronation celebration service. And an especially warm welcome to any visitors and our friends from Corbett Harbour. Uh, you're all invited, as you probably saw on the screen, to afternoon tea in the church hall after the service, where apart from the usual tea and coffee, there will be lots of tasty goodies, I am sure. Um, some dates for your diary later this week. Thursday the 11th of May at 7.30, again you may have seen this on the screen, will be the first meeting of the Holiday Club team. Um, and anyone who is interested in helping out, please come along at 7.30 here to the West Kirk. And of course, all hands and beginners are very welcome. Earlier on the 11th, there will be a church without wall service at Dixon Court at 2, 2 p.m. And of course, again, anyone who is available at that time in the day is welcome to join us for that lovely service um, with the residents at Dixon Court. On Saturday the 13th, um, Paul Bay Harbour Church are holding a Games Day from 2 to 4 p.m. This event is free, and no matter your age, there will be something for you, for everyone. Uh, and snacks will be on sale at the top shop. So everyone welcome, and hopefully the weather will be better than it was for the coronation yesterday. Uh, on Sunday the 14th of May, team time is here at West Kirk at 6.15. Finally, next Sunday, as you, again you may have seen on the screen, the 14th, is the start of Christian Aid Week. Um, envelopes were distributed to the West Kirk congregation as you came in to the church, but if you missed out, please collect one as you leave. Um, and <coughs> the will be available next week in the church. Uh, and envelopes, at least here, can be returned next week or any Sunday in May. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. A very warm welcome to all of you to our special coordination celebration service. I would just like to start off by thanking Craig for ringing the church bells yesterday when the coordination service started with so many other churches throughout the United Kingdom. It was lovely that we could participate in that. And then, like Alison said, our service today will be followed by a special afternoon tea. So please stay behind so that we can all spend some time together around the table with a lot of cuppa and a cake, just celebrating and enjoying the fellowship of believers. Let us now worship God. We are gathered to offer worship and praise to Almighty God to celebrate the life of our nation, to pray for Charles and Kay, to recognize and to give thanks for his life of service to this nation, to the realms, and to the common world. Let us dedicate ourselves alike in body, mind, and spirit to a renewed faith, a joyful hope, and a commitment to serve one another in love. Our first hymn this morning is Hymn 160, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. <laughs>
now come before God and pray. Let us pray. Loving Father, we have come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to seek forgiveness of our sins, to hear and receive your holy word, and to pray for the needs of the world. We also gather this day to pray for our King, that both now and always, God may grant him wisdom and grace for his ministry among us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we, with Charles our King, give ourselves to your service, God, and to others, that our communities may flourish and be places of trust and friendship. Equip the King and all your people with the gifts to fulfil our calling, that we may love as you love, serve as you serve, and willingly follow wherever you lead. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is now time for our kids' talk. And this morning, boys and girls, I would like to ask you something. Does any one of you know what you would like to become one day when you are all grown up? Yes, Emily? A chef. A chef. Super. Anybody else? A builder. A builder. You've been wonderful. Anybody else know? Emily? Doctor. A doctor. That is amazing. Doesn't matter if you don't know yet, there's still plenty of time to figure it out. I can almost guarantee that these guys who are sure about their jobs might change their minds along the way. But today I would like to talk to you a little bit about the different jobs we can do and especially the jobs where you can be identified by wearing a hat. <laughs> so, I've brought along a few hats. And I would like to put these on your head and then ask the other boys and girls to guess what job or occupation you have. So would anybody like to come forward? Okay, Thomas, you come first. There's plenty of hands. Coast Guard or 
He should do his very best to lead the people in the right way during this time. And my favorite of all those objects are the orb, because the orb has very special symbolism. The ball represents the whole world. And the cross at the top represents Christ. So that means that Christ, Jesus, is the king of the whole world. And it's Christ who appointed King Charles to be the king of the United Kingdom where he can do certain things on behalf of God. So can you see what a very, very, very important job he has? He needs to do and say the right things because he's doing it on behalf of God. Now that is not easy. And that's why we have to pray for him. Every single time we sing the national anthem, we sing, God save the king. And that is a prayer. It's important that we mean it and that we keep praying for him all the time. Because if we can do that, this very important job he has, a job he didn't choose, a job he has to do, will be even more difficult. But if we carry him in our prayers, he'll be able to be an amazing king. So for the children's hymn this morning, I want us to listen to a very special song that was written especially for King Charles. And it's very easy to join into. So once you feel you've got the hand on it, please sing along. After this song, I would like to invite all the boys and girls up to Sunday Club and our teenagers to Bible class. So let us now stand for God save the King.
prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Blake is now singing hymn 694, Gather Sister, Blake is serving.
as high. Can you imagine what it must feel like to carry the responsibility for your whole country and the Commonwealth on your shoulders? To always have to set an example, make the right choices, say the right things, be seen in the right places. To be in the public eye constantly. And while you're there, being judged by a very critical public. I can't even begin to imagine what kind of pressure the king is under every moment of his life. When I scrolled through Facebook yesterday, there were lots of pictures of people enjoying afternoon tea while they watched the coronation on TV. Even people who don't live in the United Kingdom, enjoying time with their families, celebrating with the rest of the nation. But there were also posts of people who didn't enjoy yesterday saying things like, not my king. There were so many people lining the streets of London despite the wet weather, just to get a glimpse of the king and the queen. But there were also people who deliberately stayed home. The monarchy is an age of British tradition, but not everybody is in favour of it. And that's okay, because we live in a country where we pride ourselves on the fact that everybody is entitled to their own opinion. But I do think that that will put the king under even more pressure than he is under already. And this leads me to the question, how will King Charles be able to not break under all this pressure? The answer to this very loaded question is actually quite simple. The only way in which the king will be able to fulfill his duties properly is if he relies on God to help him. Also, that will be an impossible task to do. Now, I don't know what I was expecting, but I think the content and symbolism of the coronation service yesterday was just so lovely. I guess because we live in a secularized society where the church is so often pushed to the sideline, I didn't expect the service to be so rich in Christian symbolism and tradition. And that's what I loved about it. What an amazing opportunity to remind the whole world <coughs> that without God, our lives will be difficult and empty. The Archbishop of Canterbury used the same words, blessing and anointment ritual that the priest Zadok used in Old Testament times to anoint King Solomon. If you want to read up a little more about this, you can find it in the Old Testament in first place. Then the king was stripped from the robe of state during the actual anointment, symbolizing that God sees us the way we are. It's almost as if he was naked before God. And there he wore the anointing gown, a plain white gown that's free from decoration. And this simple design is meant to convey purity before God. The king was given the privilege and responsibility to reign in God's name like a true Old Testament king whose main responsibility it was to look out for and to stand up and speak out on behalf of all those who couldn't do it for themselves or didn't have somebody else who could do it for them. Yesterday, King Charles was set apart to do God's will. I was very moved when the king was addressed by the young boy at the start of the service, Samuel Strachan, where he said, Your Majesty, as children of the kingdom of God, we welcome you in the name of the king of 
Gaius. And then the king replied in the words of Jesus. He says, In his name and after his example I come, not to be served, but to serve. Recognizing that serving God's people in this time and place is not an easy task. And that is why, in his reflection, the Archbishop of Canterbury said that we should always pray for the king so that in everything he does, he models the love of God that was shown to us through Jesus Christ. We should pray that he is filled unto the fullness of God. These words are taken from the passage we read from the Bible this morning. A prayer originally written for the people of Ephesus, but very apt at this time of the coronation. Let me read you some of it again. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power to grasp how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ is, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. To be able to always hold his head up high, the king will have to be strong. And how will he be able to always be strong? If he is filled to the brim with the love, the strength, and the goodness of God. And I thought I would like to share a wee analogy with you now which will make this concept a little easier to understand. Imagine you are holding a cup of coffee when somebody bumps into you, making you spill your coffee everywhere. Why did you spill the coffee? Our first reaction would be to say, because somebody bumped into me. Okay. But that's not the answer I'm looking for. You spilled the coffee because there was coffee in your cup. Had there been tea in your cup, you would have spilled the tea. Whatever is inside the cup will spill out. Therefore, when life comes along and shakes you, which will happen, Whatever is inside you will come out. It's very easy to fake that you are in control until you get trampled. So we have to ask ourselves, what is in my cup? When life gets tough, what spills over? Joy? Gratitude, peace, humility, or anger, bitterness, a victim mentality, or quitting tendencies. Life provides the cup. We choose how we fill it. If King Charles makes sure that his cup is filled to the brim with the qualities God bestowed on him as a king, he will be able to have a successful reign to the glory of God. He will be able to face whatever comes his way, because if he is shaken, scrutinized and put under pressure, the right things will spill over. He will know what to say and to do, because if he is filled with the joy and peace of God, that is what will come out. But yesterday, we didn't only hear that King Charles was called to serve. We also heard that each one of us is called by God to serve. So these words don't only apply to the king, it applies to every single one of us too. How often 
Do you hear people complaining that their lives are empty? As we fill our lives with the love of God, we will never be empty. We will be strong. Because the love of God is stronger than anything. We read together that the love of God is wider, longer, higher and deeper than anything the Royal Highnesses or any of us will ever have to face. Because the love of God surpasses everything. So let's support our King, our Queen and their role by carrying them in our prayers. Let's keep praying that God will fill them with his everlasting love because this will give them courage, strength, humility, peace, contentment and perseverance. And let's keep praying for others, for those close to us and those we don't even know. Because when it's hard to fill your life with the right things, the prayers of others can do that for you. Like a running tap, filling those you are praying for with care and compassion until they are overflowing too. And finally, let's pray for ourselves. Pray with our whole hearts that God will fill us with his kindness and generosity, his strength and perseverance, his forgiveness and love, a love that can overcome anything. So that when we are under pressure, these qualities will spill over, and bit by bit, we will make this world a better place. Because in the end, it's not the position you hold in society that makes you a special person. It's the way in which you speak and act. It's not the crown on your head that makes you a good king or queen. It's the love in your heart. Amen.
Let us come together in prayers of thanksgiving and intercessions. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the wonder of creation, for the gift of human life and for the blessing of human fellowship. For Christ, your living word, through whom we are taught the perfect way of life and the royalty of service, and for your spirit, who brings forth the fruit of love, joy, and peace. By your grace, may we use your abundant gifts for the common good. Gracious God, accept these gifts we offer, and with them our lives, to be used in your service, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We give you thanks for all who have heard your call and served you faithfully. Eternal and almighty God, we humbly bow before you knowing that you are the sovereign Lord and Master of all. Today we remember that Christ is, for us, the way and the truth and the life, and through him we come to you. In that knowledge we pray for the nations of our world and all that unites and divides us. We remember the times we get it so wrong and enter into conflict, recalling the destruction that war brings. We know that it is not your way, for your way is the way of peace. We pray for peace among the nations and the recognition of each other through a common humanity and with unconditional love, a lasting peace that sees truth and life at its heart. Eternal God, you tell us that we can ask for anything in your name and you will do it. We are bold to imagine in your presence countries and nations striving for understanding and finding ways of living together. Inspired by your way, may we provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Inspired by your truth, may we seek justice and bring integrity to public life. Inspired by your life, may we reveal the light of God's presence to the sick, the weak and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them. We pray for our King, the Queen and the Royal Family. May your blessing be upon them in the duties that they carry out throughout our land and abroad. Grant to His Majesty King Charles the gift of wise leadership and clarity of vision and the strength to be self-giving and faithful. We ask that His faith in you will grow ever deeper and be the source of much fruitfulness to your glory. We pray for those who serve in our Scottish Parliament and local councils and in Westminster. We ask you to enlighten them with wisdom in all their decisions to seek the well-being of the communities they serve. Everlasting God, your word has always been there since the beginning of time. There, as a truth to be discovered and rediscovered, by each passing generation. May your grace be felt once more and your praise be sung in you. May your people return and share your love with joy and hope. In your redeeming love, you accept us and welcome us. In your love, help us to be the children of light. Here then, these are prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our concluding hymn is hymn 704, I Vow to Thee, My Pastor. <laughs>
receive the blessing of God and go in peace. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you, now and evermore. Amen. Amen.